Today is a sad day for me and Steeler Nation. But was it inevitable? Big Deke news. The Steelers traded Mr. 69, Kevin Dotson, the old 6-9er, to the Los Angeles Rams for some pick swaps. So the Steelers are also in the trade giving up their fifth rounder, but in return get the Rams' fourth rounder. And also the Steelers traded their sixth rounder, but get the Rams' fifth rounder. So in total, we give up Kevin Dotson, our fifth rounder, our sixth rounder, but get the Rams' fourth rounder and fifth rounder. Uh, this one's a bummer. First, because I have a Kevin Dotson jersey, and I may be the only one out there that has a Kevin Dotson jersey. I bought it back in his rookie year, whenever he was showing flashes, and I thought he could be a perennial pro bowler for us on the O-line, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. I also may have bought it because of the number on the jersey too, but that's neither here nor there. What do I do with it now going forward? I mean, I'm obviously still keeping it. It's a damn classic, you know what I mean? And then we don't even know who's going to be picking up the torch. Like, is anyone out there on the O-line going to switch their number to 69? So, uh, as of right now, Dotson is still the most recent player on the Steelers to wear 69. So, we're still rocking with that jersey. Definitely not burning it or getting rid of it or anything like that. But to be honest with you, my other initial takeaways from this trade is it's a win-win for both sides. Like, for the Steelers, I'm guessing, since we have Omar Khan, the Don as our GM, this was the best trade package that he could come up with. And then for Kevin Dotson... Yeah, the writing was on the wall. Like There was no more room for you here on the offensive line. The Steelers were ready to move on from you because we signed James Daniel going back to last offseason, another guy that plays the same position as you for a multi-year deal. And then just this offseason, we brought in Isaac Samalu and Nate Herbig. So you were presumably fourth on our depth chart. So either the Steelers were going to trade you now or at some point before the trade deadline or you were going to play out your season here. I don't know how much PT you would have got, but once the season ended, you would have moved on and signed with another team. But in this case, the Steelers were able to get something back. We were able to upgrade our fifth rounder to a fourth rounder and our sixth rounder to a fifth rounder. And hopefully the Rams are bad this year as projected to be. So that fourth round pick will be somewhere early in the fourth round and same with the fifth round pick. But yeah, I just, it makes sense for both sides. Like Dotson in a perfect world probably wasn't going to be getting much PT here in Pittsburgh because if Sam Alu and James Daniel were to stay healthy, he would just be on the bench. Now, awesome depth for Pittsburgh to have, no doubt, but for Dotson, probably not the most optimal scenario because he is a starter in this league. I truly believe it. Like the Rams low key might have got a steal here because Dotson has started 30 plus games. And if they move him to right guard, they may be able to get the most out of him because Motis said he thinks Dawson plays better at right guard, but Dawson has said it himself because he was on the podcast back two, three years ago, and we asked him, what do you like, left guard or right guard? He said, yeah, right guard is my more natural position. I think I could be way better there. So we'll have to see how the Rams use him, if he could potentially tap into some of what we thought he could become here in Pittsburgh. Like, I thought he would be much better than what he was and I still thought he was good. It's just there's there were some unfortunate plays here or there that popped up that were highlighted a lot. But Dotson was a damn good player here in Pittsburgh. So I wish him the best out in L.A. except for when he's playing the Steelers. And I think that's going to be like week seven or eight this year. So for those games, Cam Hayward, Keanu Benton, Larry Ogunjobi go off against Dotson in that Rams O-line. But now what does that mean for the Steelers going forward? And our O-line. I think it opens up a spot because Dotson was a part of the eight O-linemen that were locks in my 53-man roster projection. Now, with him gone, that opens something up. And I think it should go, if it was me, that should go to Spencer Anderson, the guy that we drafted in the seventh round, showed promise throughout training camp and preseason, very versatile across the offensive line, can basically play all five positions, but does specialize in the interior with guard and also center. It shouldn't go to Kendrick Green. Basically, anyone but Kendrick Green. I think the priority should be Spencer Anderson because he has more of a future here. But I got this weird feeling we're going to keep Kendrick Green on the 53-man. Now, I don't know if when the roster cuts come down, we keep both Anderson and Kendrick Green and a total of 9-0 linemen. 
But in terms of us keeping eight, let's just have Spencer Anderson take Kevin Dotson's spot. I think that makes the most sense. But you let me know your guys' thoughts on this Kevin Dotson trade. Yeah, I don't think there's much to it. I think it's a win-win for both sides, not the end of the world for us, but could be a really good opportunity for Dotson out there in L.A. Again, wishing the best except for when he's playing the Steelers. Once a Steeler, always a Steeler. But, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think it means for the O-line once these 53-man roster cuts happen on Tuesday? Yeah, that'll be within, like, the next day or so. But, yeah, that's it for this edition of Big Deke News on a Sunday night. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay chilling and peace.